שלום חברים, and ברוכים הבאים to our special program. Every week we get together before the Shabbat to study Parashat HaShavu in our program, Pnine HaTorah, the pearls of the Torah. And I promised you when we started it that we're going to bring exciting guests into our program that will be able to share another angle from the Torah that will ultimately lead us to Mashiach Tzitkenu. It says in the Midrash Shivim Panim La Torah, there are 70 faces to the Torah and a 70 different interpretation to each verse. And today we have uh, another face, another <laughs> name to put next to interpreting the holy words of Hashem, uh, Rabbi Barry Rubin. Baruch Abba, welcome to Pnei Torah. Remember, it says, Barry, if you believed, Yeshua says that if you believe to him, you know, if you believe to Moses, you're also going to believe in him. Yeah. And we study every week the Torah portion yes. in, in our desire to find a Messiah, understand end times, and st- uh, understanding the Geula and the redemption to come. First of all, tell us a, a word about yourself. You are uh, the senior rabbi of uh, uh, in, the in, oldest, oldest congregation yeah, in the world. The oldest Messianic Jewish congregation in the world that still exists. It's over 100 years old. We just celebrated our 100th anniversary last summer. Okay. And uh, I'm still the rabbi there. I've been there for 36 years. What's the name? Years. What's the name? Emmanuel Messianic Jewish Congregation. And, and where is it at? It's right, it's Clarksville, Maryland, right outside of Columbia, Maryland, between Baltimore and Washington. People are welcome to come. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we give you the website. Come and visit them. Uh, Rabbi Berry is working on a lot of projects. He's, uh, he's the publisher of the Complete Jewish Bible. Right. But you're also a rabbi. People don't know that you're yeah. a Messianic Jewish I'm rabbi. Kind of busy. <laughs> do, you, do you love studying the Torah? Of course. So let me ask you a question. This Shabbat, I want to yeah. ju- jump yeah. to yeah. business with you. This Shabbat, last week we have, we have been in Parashat Bo. This yeah. Shabbat is exciting. Parashat Beshalach. Right. We have uh, the Song of Moses. We have another song we're going to discuss. Yeah. First of all, do you see the Messiah here? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Okay, so t- tell us first of all, for 50 foot uh, level, uh, high level, what, what, what is God has been gravitating you, to- you toward in this Torah portion? Well, I, I, first I wanted to look at the background of how we got to this place. And, okay. You know, you go back to the Exodus and how God redeemed our people right. through the sacrifice of a, of a perfect, unblemished, unblemished, spotless lamb, that if the people would, in faith, kill it, take its blood and put it on the front door of their homes, the angel of death would pass over. That to me is a, a beginning of a picture of the coming Messiah and what he would do. And, and frankly, it's a picture of the redemption of our people. People need to understand, you know, we're starting to count forward towards Sinai, right? Towards Mount Sinai and yeah. the marriage of Israel, which happened 50 days later. So in, in a way, he's, he's shaping up the bride. Right? He's preparing the bride. People need to understand that those mm-hmm. 50 days is, is, is just in a marriage, you have a period that's called Erosin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nir is preparing, he's preparing Israel. Yeah. And he used the servant Moses and, and Aaron and obviously mm-hmm. uh, Miriam, mm-hmm. as we're going to look, mm-hmm. to prepare us not just to this wedding, but also prepare us in a way to a future yeah, wedding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, definitely. So uh, t- talk to us a little bit about. Uh, the songs that we're seeing here, okay. and uh, w- what what the Lord touched your heart in well, this week portion. It's interesting. Um, I was looking at this, and in uh, in in Exodus 15, yes, uh, there is a uh, something called the Song of Moses. Yes, uh, the uh, I think it's like the first uh, what uh, 19 verses of the of chapter 15. But immediately after the Song of Moses, it says also Miriam the prophet, sister of Aharon, Aaron took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines. It sounds g- kind of rude, and and obnoxious. I'm going to you, talk about that in you, a second, because you, I thought, what is going on here? What was she trying to do? It's, and they, they said the same words that are found in, in the Song of Moses, Sing to Adonai, for he is exalted, for the horse and rider he threw into the sea, which are the same, the <laughs> word same that, words. The word that, you, that M- Moshe just told He that. just said that. So I said to myself. You know what this reminds me? Like somebody get up, and let's say you're the rabbi, and give the message yeah. up. And then somebody's come to give announcements. Yeah. And he give, he give the message again. He's like, why is this person doing so, it, right? Exactly. And I wonder, what, what is up with this? Uh, the, the words are the same as Moses said. So right. I thought to myself, 
Is okay. Miriam doing Maybe a one-upsmanship on Moses, her brother, you know, because mm -hmm. she was older? Or was she just trying to do a women's lib thing because it was all the women that did this song and dance? Uh, she was thinking that maybe the women would do a better job than the men. I couldn't figure it out, so I looked a little but, deeper. But, you know, before you even get there, I just want to throw something. Because here, the, the key verses, which we're going to read in a minute, it says, I would argue that even when the language of the Torah here said, Miriam and Nevi'ah, it says just Miriam. Miriam and Nevi'ah. So I think that just by the language of the Torah here, we need to pay close attention yeah. because when you say Nevi'ah, what a Navi do bring is prophecy. Right. Navi bring Nevi'ah. Right. Okay. So the reason she said Miriam and Nevi'ah because actually she's going to bring a prophecy forward, yeah. right? That, exactly, and that's what it, it says that she was a prophet and the sister of Aharon, and that's significant. So. First, uh, let's, can we read those verses immediately after, after before we get to, to some, let's just read those verses first. Which one? Uh, uh, straight after the song of Moses, we, we read uh, in yeah, chapter 15, verse 19, it says, Kiba suspao for the uh, horse of Pharaoh with his chariot and horsemen went into the sea, and the Lord turned back on them the waters of the sea. But the Israelites marched on dry ground in the midst of the sea. That's how it ended up. And then it says, this is the last verse in the song. And then it says, immediately, there is no pause. There is no delay. And it says, then Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took, in Hebrew we call it the tof or the timbrel. She took the tof in her hand. And all the women went out after her in dance with timbrels. And when Miriam chanted to them, Shiula Adonai, Ki Gaha Gaa, Susuruch Bora Mabaya, for he is trampled gloriously, horse, horse and driver, he is hurdled into the sea, which is the word Moses just spoke. Yeah. So, what's up with that? What? And, and interesting enough, immediately the, then the portion go to something else. The yeah. Kind of defied. There is a logical division here. Was well, something. Something there, was, happened. there was something important for, for Hashem to get the word that she was a prophet and Aaron's sister. And so I looked into that. And uh, So uh, what the, where is the prophecy here? Uh, what well, is the prophecy about? What yeah. is it all about? If I take, this is, uh, Hazal uh, references, references this according to... And if to, you want the quote, just so you know, yeah. uh, we talked about it. Uh, we found amazing uh, commentary yeah. in Exodus Rabbah, chapter right. 1, right. verse 20, and also in the Mechilta on this. So so give us some of the, the background of what is going on. Well, I think this, this... There's a great mystery. This here. refers back to when um, Moses was a baby. Okay. And... And Pharaoh decided that he would, didn't want any Jewish boys around, so he decreed that all the Jewish boys That's are right. destroyed. That is, that is the beginning so, of Exodus, so, right? Right. So Mo, uh, Moses, before he was even born, his mother decided that she would protect her son. So she put Moses, after he was born, in a basket and covered it with pitch. So yeah, yeah, see. yeah, yeah. It's, and it's called Teva, right? So it says actually the cross-reference to even understand... The, what this verse is about, it's found in Parashat Shemot, in Exodus chapter 2, two. Ver, verse, we'll start in verse 3. For the, it says, when she could hide him no longer, she got a wicker basket right. for him and cocked it with bit, what is it called? Bit, bitumen, 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 yeah. bitumen and pitch. 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 Zephit, pitch. yeah, mm -hmm. and pitch, zephit in Hebrew. She put the child into it and placed it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. By the way, do we know another child that was put in, into uh, some sort of a cover? Yeah, we'll, yeah, get that that. we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. And there is a very interesting verse, verse 4, Vatityatsevachoto, and his sister stood, and there he used the word rachok, which is mean distance, there's a mm -hmm. distance, afar, ladat maya selo, to see what's going to happen to the kid. Exactly, exactly. And it's weird. You, first of all, you read these verses, say, so wait a second, what Miriam was doing here? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Why Miriam standing well, from afar? Why is the Torah even telling us this detail? We discovered that the sages commented about this because they wanted to know what is she doing there, what was going on, 
And uh, they argue that she wanted to see if the prophecy that she gave that her mother's child, not herself, but the other child that was just born, Moses, would become the rescuer of the people of Israel. So she stood around and watched yeah, to let, see what would happen. Let, let, let's give them a few, few lines from the Midrash itself. Okay. When Miriam was a little child, she was younger, it says this, Rav, Rabbi Amram, which was Moses' father, mm -hmm. says in the name of Rav, because Miriam prophesied and said in the future, mother will give a birth to a child mm -hmm. that will be the savior of the Jewish mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. When Moses was born, the entire family, the entire house was filled with house, okay? Miriam's father arose and kissed her on her, on her head. He, Amram, says to her, Miriam, my daughter, your prophecy has been fulfilled. We need to talk about it. Where has it been fulfilled, mm -hmm. okay? So the Midrash says that she stood back mm -hmm. because she wanted to see if the prophecy... Right that's going to be received about this child is actually going to come to fruition, yeah, right? Exactly, because that was important, that she understood how important that prophecy was because she understood that this baby might be the savior of the people of Israel. So she watched to see what would happen. And I, I don't blame her because if you put a baby in a basket in the Nile River where they have crocodiles and snakes and also Egyptians looking for babies to kill, she had to wonder, is he going to survive? So there is something significant here because the fulfillment... There's a fulfillment of this prophecy, okay, that um, is going to be coming in the Torah portion yes, this week, that's okay? The point. There's a fulfillment of, of this through her singing. Mm. She is fulfilling a prophecy. But I want to I want to ask you a question. Do you believe, I guess my from my do you believe she was in the wrong to stand stand back? Of course not. No. No, no, she was. She was. That, Do you think that she was, was doubting the prophecy, though? No, I think In she was. I, th no, I don't think she was doubting. I think she was watching and waiting for the fulfillment of the prophecy. Okay. Because this was her brother. Okay. And and she knew that God had. It seems kind of cruel, though, you know. Well, <laughs> in, stood, in a way, in fact, in, in fact, uh, if you imagine being uh, someone's sister watching what was going to happen, I think most people wouldn't do it. They would look the other way. They would say, I don't want to see what would happen, because there's crocodiles, there's, there's Egyptians who want to kill them. And yet she watched, she wanted to see, because she knew that Hashem would rescue this baby, because he was the prophetic, prophesied savior of the people of, of Israel through the Yom, Yom Suf, the Red Sea, mm -hmm. when okay. that ultimately happened. Okay. Which brings us back to Exodus 15, really. Okay, so, 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 so walk us now through this. What do you see in this? So this is really what we're talking about right now is a messianic prophecy in some way about Moses. There is. Right? I think that Miriam was, where it says she was a, a, a Navi here, what was her prophecy? It was that her mother would have a child who would be the savior of the people of Israel, which was Moses. So she's watching to see this take place. Then we come back to the, when Israel was delivered out of Egypt and, and were, was told by Pharaoh to, to leave town. Of course, Pharaoh changed his mind, you know. Yeah. Once again, he said, we can't let these people go. They work too good. They're good workers. Let's get them back. So he went after them. And so we have the scene at, the, at, the, at Yom Suf, the Red Sea, the Sea of Reeds, where uh, Israel's about to be destroyed by Pharaoh's armies, and, and, and Hashem does a miracle. He parts the Red Sea, yes. and Israel gets through on dry ground, yes. and his soldiers drown. And by the way, there's, there's our new archaeological evidence that has found chariot wheels in the bottom of the, of the Red Sea. Amazing. So this is a true story. So, uh, uh, so what was happening is God was delivering the people of Israel, and Moses was fulfillment of the prophecy that Miriam gave, Yes, he was the savior of the people. So what happened at the end of it, um, they sang a song. Yes. It says in verse 15, uh, chapter 15, 15 all the people of Israel sang a song. Yes. They were having a great time, they were having a great party because they were delivered. That's right. I will sing to Adonai for he is exalted, the horse and the rider he threw into the sea, which we know it's Zena Zena. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to sing, are we? Well, no, no, it's not, we, don't, we don't want to scare it's people. It's a good song, though. <laughs> Zena, Zena. So anyway, when, um, when, uh, when this happened, Mos, uh, Miriam uh, seemed to uh, want to add to this. I guess in music they call it a, a coda, C-O-D-A, like a conclusion. And she repeated the same 
line about the redeemer about that and you wonder what she was doing and and so the yeah but 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 i guess my question to you if moses already sang the song and he is saying i'm the redeemer through this song mm -hmm. he is the redeemer of israel i guess it's a trick question and she's saying okay he is the redeemer and here we are we're going to complete this song mm -hmm. isn't our redemption is already complete as yeah. jews what we should I, doing what we should yeah i mean what we should do can I, can I throw something at you that is very interesting? In the song of Moses, it starts with the word as, then. Chazal came and says on the word then, as, they said the reason it says as, because he's talking about a future tense. Mm -hmm. Moses has not yet completed the song, right. okay? So he's talking about some sort of a future, in the word as, Yashir Moshe. Then Moses will sing. He's talking about a future song that Moses will sing mm -hmm. when Mashiach comes. Mm -hmm. So it is perhaps verse one of a song. Maybe there's a verse two to the song. And maybe uh, in Revelation we have the song of Moses that's again. That's where I was going. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So that's good. Yes. Yeah, so okay. So conti continue to go forward with us here. Well, I will. Um, so I think that Miriam was fulfilling her role and basically reinforcing what happened in the Song of Moses. Why would she say the same words again? And, and you have to see what she was doing was celebrating the fulfillment of the prophecy that she gave. That's right. I also thought about this some more because there was another Miriam later in Jewish history, the mother of Yeshua the Messiah. Wow, Her name was Miriam also. Okay, interesting. And, uh, you know, when she was sp spoken to by Hashem through an angel, that she would be the, the mother of a of a special child and she wasn't even married so this was all very miraculous stuff for her so um mo uh so, you, so are you connecting it somehow to the miriam the mother of yeshua i am because listen the names are the same yes the situation is the same because moshe was the savior of the people coming out of egypt yeshua is the savior of the people going henceforth and the situation was the same because you have the Egyptian pharaoh and leaders trying to destroy the baby boys, exactly what happened in the early part of Yeshua's life because no. King Herod was jealous about who this baby boy was called the Mashiach, and he declared that all the baby boys would be killed. Whereas we know that, that God protected uh, Yeshua and his parents. But uh, in particularly interesting, I think, to me, is that Miriam, the mother of Yeshua, sang a song okay, also. Where, where is that at? That is found in Luke chapter 1. Do you have the reference? I, I do, verses 46 to 55. Let's go there. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll look in my complete Jewish yeah. study Bible. Yeah. And, and this is called in Christian circles, particularly Catholic mm. Christian circles, Mary's Magnificat. Now, oh, it's okay. not a term I use, but it might be familiar to Luke 1 what? Luke 1, 46. Luke one forty six, amazing. Oh, so uh, it says uh, this verse four, Luke one forty six. Then Miriam, Yeshua's mother, this is all. Her name is Mary to yeah. some, but yeah. we know yeah, Miriam. Yeah. Yes, and Miriam said, "My soul magnifies Adonai, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, who has taken notice of the servant girl in her humble position." For imagine it, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me. Indeed, His name is holy, and in every generation He has mercy on those who fear Him. He has performed mighty deeds with His outstretched arm, just like Moses did, routed the secretly proud, brought down rulers from their thrones, raised up the humble, and filled the hungry with good things, but sent away the rich empty. He has taken the part of His servant Israel, yeah. mindful of the mercy which he promised to our fathers, to Avraham and his seed forever. So in this, basically a song that is sung in Christian circles a lot, it's once again a reference to God's faithfulness to his people Amen. Israel. To wow. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their descendants forever. But it's interesting because, because Abraham is mentioned by name, which means everybody who's partaking the Abrahamic yeah. can in essence 
partake in this song. Absolutely. Yes, that's, that is amazing. So you're saying that this song by Miriam, which actually connect the dot for me, that saying in the Torah is actually speaking about a future song mm -hmm. of another Miriam yeah. who, who will be singing to bring the Redeemer of Israel. Yeah, and the pattern is the same. So look, the word Moshe Chai in Gematria is Hamashiach. Okay. And it says in Exodus Rabbah 2, verse 4, Kegoel Rishon, Kegoel Acharon. As first Redeemer as the last Redeemer. Mm. They must parallel. Mm -hmm. Moses mm -hmm. and Mashiach must parallel. Without doubt. We, we, we in here, the parallel is absolutely stunning yeah. beyond, beyond mm. Miriam, beyond Miriam words here. And I was thinking even about this even further. It says very next verse after this song. Did you notice something? He says, Vaisam Moshe Israel Miad Msub they left to Yom Suf and they go to the and to the wilderness and how long did they walk? They walk for three days. You want to talk mm. about a parallel? Mm -hmm. There is a parallel here mm. also that related for the three days. And think about after the three days, look, it said they didn't have water. Okay, they had bitter water. Okay, and by the way, the word bitter, it's also from the word marim or miriam, mm -hmm. is interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, in essence, if one does not listen to what Miriam proclaimed, he's going to receive bitter water. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? They, com they complain, and God gives him sweet water. Mm -hmm. Is it a picture of the entire end time? Mashiach came, there was a song proclaimed. Those who didn't believe in the song had a period of bitterness. Mm -hmm. It's called tribulation. Mm -hmm. It's Jacob trouble. But in the end, there's a sweet, sweet yeah, water. Definitely. It is the entire gospel. It's found here in the Torah and it's found here to the song of, of Miriam. That's the wonderful thing about studying the Torah because there are patterns and predictions and all that sort of stuff that if you dig deep, which I know you do with your Shiva, people can uncover that. So what can we learn, in your opinion, through the song of Miriam, the second Miriam, I will call her, mm -hmm. about the coming of Mashiach yeah. and, and about what we are to do well, today? Well, I think that that needs to be understood this way. At the end of the song that Miriam sung in Luke, yes. um, it's about Avraham and his seed. Yes. That's all the believers in God through Yeshua, uh, the Messiah. And it boils down to this. God is faithful to his people, yes. and God keeps his promises. And that's what all this is about. And, and, and even if the people don't keep their promises, he keeps his covenant. And it's through the zechut, the merit of our fathers, yeah. of Abraham, through Isaac and Jacob. She, she says, Tamach be Israel avdo. And here she actually, you know, interesting because she used this term, the servant of the Lord. Sure. And she said, the servant of the Lord is Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe she's working for the anti-missionaries. I don't I know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I'm just joking around, of course. But but you know what I mean? She, she used the term, the servant of the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. You say, it is Israel this quote of Hamav, and it's actually she quote from uh, Psalm 90, 98 and, uh, and Isaiah uh, uh, 41, the both, both are references for the, and then it says, because it is for the merits uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So what does it mean? Okay, so now put this all for us together. Mm -hmm. What can we take from those two songs for us as a Messianic mm -hmm. believer? Where, where, do, where can we take it today? Mm -hmm. I, I just was very uplifted when I read them because I realized that it was a message from Hashem to us, that He is there for us. We need to trust Him, we need to follow Him, and He is there for us. But you know what I see in this? Listen to what Miriam has done. She rejoiced at the salvation that is given there to her. We have so many people today they look at the world and say, oh, we're in a fallen world. Mm. The lower world is going down, down. You know, there's darkness and evil. There's uh, this uh, season in the body of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But I, I learned something from Miriam here mm -hmm. from the first song. Those who believe in the Redeemer have to rejoice. They're rejoicing. She have a simcha. Yes, there are obstacles. Yeah, they're going to eat the wilderness. Then for three days, they're not going to have water. But you say, I'm rejoicing mm -hmm. in the fact that God is giving us Savior. And they could have easily been destroyed. 
Yeah. This is the pro because because God is God and He chose us, we can believe that He will see us through, just so, like He saw the Israelites through the Yom Suf to dry land, and they celebrated, just like Miriam repeated the same thing. Why Miriam, the New Covenant, is seeing that as well. It's a message. It's a general message that God is faithful to His people, and we can celebrate, rejoice. So, so look, the next month in the Hebrew Hebrew uh, uh, calendar is the month of Adar. Okay, Adar is coming, and Chazal says, "Mishinichnas Adar marbin anu besimcha." As Adar come in, we are rejoiceful. We are rejoiceful. We are to have exceedingly joy. After Adar come the month of Nisan, mm -hmm. right? Nisan comes from the word Nes. Nisim, miracle. miracle, right? The, the Mount of our Redemption. But the rabbis said, before you can, you can ask for the miracle, you have to have exceeding abundance of joy. Okay? This word simcha, joyfulness. Simcha, flip the letter, samech, mashiach. Okay. Mashiach. There is a joy here, be my opinion, because they recognize Moshe is our mashiach. Mm -hmm. He is a deliverer, and the prophecy, prophecy that he is giving us for all the children of Israel, and by the way, they are, listen, they're not in the promised land. No. They're still in the wilderness. No. On the way. So people come to me and all the time, is it to me, yeah, they, yeah it's great that you should Moshe. He's not fulfill all of things. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He, he's not fulfill all things through Moshe Rabbeinu right. either. Right. There is a process to right. redemption. Yes, 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 yes. So the question I want to challenge our audience today is, do you rejoice in the process of redemption? Mm -hmm. The same thing is, I was thinking about the second Miriam. You know where she gave this song? She gave this song before Yeshua was born. Mm -hmm. Yeshua is not born yet. Right. She's going through the birth pangs of Mashiach. You know, we're talking about this time, Sar Sarat Yaakov and the birth pangs. The timing of the song is significant. She's giving the song. Have you ever thought about it? It's in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. They are mm. not in the promised land. Mm -hmm. Miriam is giving the song in the Brita Hadasha, Yeshua is not to be born. Right. So people look today like, you know, Jeremiah 31, a promise mm -hmm. of a new covenant. Mm -hmm. Well, not everything in Jeremiah 31, 30, 33 has been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. No, because we are today in the Galut. Mm -hmm. We are still in the diaspora today. And we need to learn to rejoice. Rejoice in what God is doing today. Mm -hmm. nah, we can all say, oh yeah, but... It's bad, and this is bad, and the messianic movement is bad, and this is crooked. But look what Miriam did. She went in the wilderness, okay? She took the topium in the halot, and she sang with joy. And I love the fact, by the way, we didn't talk about this, but she took upon herself other women. What do you think this is significant, hmm. that she brought some more people to worship with her? Hmm. She didn't do it by herself. She said I am going to bring other people to joyful in what Mashiach has done today. I'm, I'm challenging the people, stop looking for what Mashiach is going to, to do tomorrow. <laughs> Look at what Mashiach is doing today, <laughs> even in your hardest day. In our, listen, she's pregnant. It's not easy being pregnant, you know. And, and, and not married. And not <laughs> married and having a bunch of tourists, right? Miriam here. Also, she have, they have no idea where they're going mm -hmm. to. But isn't it interesting? Think about it. These are women of great faith. Great faith. Great trust in Hashem. But we can learn from those women. I would think so. I would think yeah? so. Yeah? So, so look, here Hashem preparing us to receive the Torah. And a matter of fact, the very next parasha, the very next parasha is it true when we receive the Torah. Right? Here... The very next thing that happened, Mashiach come to the world and bring us hmm. a new covenant. Have you ever thought about that parallel? That's good. If we want to receive a new covenant, if we want to receive the Torah, if we want to walk in a covenant, I encourage everybody, rejoice in what is giving you the little today and praise His name. Praise His name tomorrow, today, today and He will teach you, as it says in the, in the end of the song of Moses, when Moses says, us, he says, I'm going to teach you the best part of the song I know, hmm. but there's a greater part, but rejoice in the part of the song I'm teaching you today, because Mashiach is going to come and teach you the rest yeah. of it later yeah. on. So rejoice is a key word here. Yeah, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Rabbi Barry, th this is quite a lesson for us, rejoicing and learning to singing for Him, yeah. not just in the, and think about it, 
for her, it started not just in the future, it started in the past. Yeah. For Miriam, it started in the past when she was just a little girl. How much more it is beautiful when we see things fulfilling our life. Uh, absolutely. So, it's so, wonderful. So, so I, I, I take a picture of this. It's when God prophesies and he speaks to us in prophets and tells us things. First of all, rejoicing when he's giving it to you. Rejoicing the journey as the things are getting fulfilled. And even when things are not getting fulfilled in your life right away, still praise him. Because only he and he alone know the timing and the mm-hmm. season, mm-hmm. right? Well, Baruch Hashem, Rabbi Berry, this has been a very, very wonderful Beshalach, Beshalach uh, uh, portion. And I pray for all of our people uh, to, yes. to have expectation. And that's why today we don't have to be doomer and gloomers. Those who know Mashiach have what to hope mm-hmm. for. Have the expectation, even if you're in the wilderness today, you have the expectation. As it says in you know Exodus 6.6, 6, just in uh, two weeks ago, portion he said, and I'll close with this. He says, in six, eight, he says, Exodus six, eight, he says, "I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'll give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord." We have a promise of a completion of all the mm-hmm. covenants mm-hmm. when he brings us to those covenants. So rejoice in this today. If it was good enough for Miriam to rejoice, it should be good enough yeah. for us to yeah. rejoice. God Amen. bless you, Rabbi Amen. Barry. To the, to the rest of you, Shabbat Shalom and Vuach. Check up Rabbi, Rabbi Barry if you're anywhere in the Maryland, uh, Washington area. For the rest of you, we are looking forward to receiving your comment and your questions on Parashat B'Shalach. Litraot, Koltuv.